Okay, let's get uh, Ubercam. Let's clear this scene. Okay, like I was saying, there was a feature request at the, the previous Ubercam meeting about a overscan option so that in your camera you can actually render more you can actually render more than what's being visible in the viewport so there's you can see that's all I'm gonna see in this camera actually in that one I'm not gonna see that let's go to the perspective that's a more normal camera so Here, let's render. Okay, now let's say you've got this framed, it's perfect, but then you're told we need to have more of this stuff on the side visible. You know, there was, uh, let's minimize that. Clone. One copy. You know, there's a ball on the side of the frame. And we want to see more of that ball. You can just barely see the ball. And you're told, okay, it's framed perfectly. But we need to see more around the borders. We need just more of it. You could move the camera back. You could try changing the, the different uh, zoom settings. Or you can use the Ubercam. Now, Ubercam is a set. It's all these plugins here. All of them are real nice. It's perspective. Now, you notice there's no overscan option but there's an overscan camera so here's how you use the overscan camera go ahead and leave your camera the way it is this will work with any camera that's not the classic camera because the classic camera is not ray traced in the same way so so it'll work with the perspective camera it'll work with any camera that's not the classic camera okay so the tools and the cameras and the, wow here's the here's the cushion camera this is this doesn't ship with Lightwave. This this gives you some different effects. Let's go ahead and use this one. So you can see it's distorted, but there's our ball, and you're told we need more of that ball. <coughs> that ball's agent paid us handsomely. Okay, so we add a camera. It can be anywhere; it doesn't matter. We'll call this one the Overscan. It's uh, right there. Now let's uh, go ahead and set this camera to Overscan camera and tell it what camera we want to render from. The selected camera is going to be our camera that we picked. So if we actually go into this view, we can see this is the camera that's selected, but look at where the cone of uh, its view is. It's coming out of this camera. So this is the camera that's selected. This is the camera will render on, but it's going to be rendering from that point of view. Now, right now it's not over scanning anything. So we'll, let's just try it out and see how it works. It's got the cushion camera effect, but it's not overscanning by anything. Oh, info saver was turned on. <laughs> this is that other, uh, this is, uh, I accidentally demoed my plugin. <laughs> this is info saver. It uh, shows you a lot more details than the, uh, the info panel on QV. It tells you, you know, what, what system it rendered on the ray trace settings, depth of field, motion blur, anti-aliasing, the name of the camera you use to render, the camera type, or actually, yes, camera type, and then the name of the camera, which you, I gave it that. Uh, the resolution, different aspect. So, these are actually earlier renders, I think. Oh, no, they are the same render. Okay, so, let's close this. Oh, it's been opening this whole time, but Firefox was too slow to load. Okay, so let's overscan it. Let's try 15%. Now you see here, now we've got 1920 by 690. I'll tell you what that does in a minute, but let's try re-rendering this scene. And now we can see already we're getting more of the ball. We're getting some of this black background. So, oh, over the uh, info saver there's actually kind of two incarnations of it you see I'm still getting this window which you can this is QV4 which is set in the render display but info saver you can find info saver there as well info saver but it also is for people that want to keep using the same uh, render display there is 
an image filter. And that, those are all the uh, image saver op or info saver options there. And it says open HTML after render. We'll have it not do that. So let's try. Let's uh, have it overscan by 30%, even more. And again, this number increased. So now we're getting a lot of that. Now we're getting the whole ball. And you see it's still got the cushion cam effect because it's still being rendered by cushion camera, but it's kind of going through a filtering process by the overscan camera. Overscan is telling the, the cushion camera what to do. So it's telling it, you need to render actually out here, not the way it's framed. So now we can see all of the ball. But if we flip between these two, you know, the, the, uh, the middle part is going to be ending up smaller. So you're getting the extra stuff out there, but the original frame, that's, that uh, section in the middle, is going to be smaller. Let me get Photoshop started opening so I can show you how to, how to, what's going on. So if we go ahead and let's uh, render this at zero overscan. So it's basically the same way it was. And this is going to render 800 by 600. There's Photoshop ready to go. That's uh, Photoshop us or uh, QV4 has a copy button. That button there will copy it to the clipboard. Click that. Come over Photoshop. New. Actually, my... Oh, there we go. So... This is act actually rendered at 640 by 480 because the ooh, the overscan camera set to 640 by 480, but the original is set to 800 by 600. That's why overscan is saying that it's 8 by 6. But if we set this camera to 640 by 480, so now they're the same. Now let's set this back to 30% because that was enough to see the, the ball. So now... It's telling us that we need to actually be rendering this at 832 by 624. And that's kind of an odd value. So you, may, you would probably change this to tweak it till it's you know, up to, oh, that was a good number. There we go, 880 by 660. It's 37%, but that's fine. So let's change the overscan camera to render that size. So it's going to be 880 by 660 not dashed zero okay so now the overscan camera is going to be rendering that big so let's render and that's copy something else I like about QV it's got these for sliding around in a big image So that's, we copied that. Let's go back into Photoshop, new, paste. So let's zoom in on that one. We can see here that that's our overscanned render. And here's the original with 0% overscan. And you can see here with uh, If you, there, that's pretty much aligned. So now, Outside the uh, the dancing ants or the marching ants, this is the original render without overscan. And then when we overscanned it, set the overscan to 37.5 or whatever, and increased the render size, we got the extra detail that we needed. We got all this extra data, but we still have the original inside of it, and it's the same size as it would have been without overscan and at the original resolution. Everybody got that? Because it was act it's actually was confusing at first. I was having to do the math by hand, and they added this awesome little box here that tells you that's the original resolution of that camera. With that percentage, you should render it this size so that you get that perfect inset. And you can actually uh, set this. Let's set this to 25%. And it uh, it's actually no. That's instead of the Vertical. Let's do horizontal. And let's see how that looks. Okay, it kind of shifted it that way. Let's shift it the other way. I want to get more of that uh, other ball. Let's 
So let's copy that. Put it back there. So now it's uh, our original is shifted a bit. So let's slide over. So this one you can see. Oh, yeah, there we go. So that's with it. That's what those jitters do. The jitter kind of shifts it over a bit. So it's not just over scanning uh, dead center. It can over scan more on one half than on another half. If we actually there you can see you can see you should be able to see there there's a lot more over scanning being done on this half than on this half because of that jitter that I put in right here this horizontal jitter negative 25 percent 